Clone ranks, and more specifically clone units, have been addressed frequently on this channel in the past, but we've been lacking a comprehensive video on the matter as a whole. The clone rank structure is complicated and a bit confusing, and while it's simpler than many real-life military structures, it is nonetheless worth the video to clear things up with. Today, we'll be doing just that. Attention, Sergeant on deck! While the Kaminoans have gotten a lot of flack on this channel as of late due to their failures in rebuilding the Republic Navy, they did much better with the Grand Army. The rank structure for the Grand Army of the Republic is a bit confusing, but it's comparatively streamlined and ended up being highly effective. It was simultaneously rigid where it needed to be and flexible where it needed to be, providing uniformity while allowing for flexibility, especially with smaller clone units. First, we'll address the ranks themselves. Clones were divided into five basic rank categories, Private, Sergeant, Lieutenant, Captain, and Commander. With Phase 1 armor, Privates wore pure white, while the higher ranks had colored flashes on their helmets and arm plates. Sergeants had olive, Lieutenants had blue, Captains had red, and Commanders had yellow. These are the commonly known ranks, but the system was actually much more complicated, with each of those basic categories containing a handful of more specific ranks which weren't visually differentiated at all, though the HUDs and clone helmets had distinct symbols for each rank. Within the basic category of Private were two ranks, Trooper and Corporal. Troopers, obviously, made up most of the Grand Army. They had no command whatsoever and simply did whatever role they were assigned to do by the higher-up officers. One of the troopers in each squad, however, would be selected to receive the rank of Corporal, which gave that clone a limited degree of command over the others in his squad as the second-in-command to the sergeant. Corporal wasn't quite as official per se as some of the other ranks were. More often than not, corporals were just referred to as regular troopers, and in effect, they were, at least until the sergeant died. Speaking of sergeants, that rank category also comes with two variants. The standard sergeant commanded a squad of clones and generally served more for coordination and tactical adaptation than anything else. Clones that originally had been bred as sergeants had alphanumeric designs that began with CS, though this gradually became a rarity since by the end of the war a large chunk of the GAR's sergeants was composed of troopers that had been promoted. One step above the rank of sergeant was sergeant major, a rank that was essentially the same as that of a sergeant but with the added responsibility of being the second in command to the lieutenant of their platoon. The rank of lieutenant was considered mid-level for clone troopers. Lieutenants were responsible for commanding platoons of men, usually in minor battlefield operations as part of a larger, concerted effort. Some clone lieutenants had the prefix CL as part of their designation, although, as with sergeants, many had the standard CT as a result of receiving the rank through promotion. There were two kinds of lieutenants, the lieutenant and the second lieutenant. Both commanded platoons, and while lieutenant is the higher rank, nothing is specified about the distinction between the two otherwise. Clone captains commanded companies by default and were the lowest rank in the GAR that had a role of any sort in large-scale strategic planning. The rank was apparently quite flexible, considering that captains are shown in command of units much larger than companies alongside Jedi generals, though the reason for this is unclear. Captain has no rank variants, but the rank of Clone Major shares its basic category as both use red armor flashes. The reason for this is unknown, especially since Clone Majors commanded battalions, which would put them on equal footing with Clone Commanders. Why the rank of Clone Major even exists is unclear, but it has yet to be explored outside of its handful of mentions. The rank category of Clone Commander was, perhaps, the broadest, despite containing the fewest number of men. There were four types of clone commanders. The standard commander was in charge of a battalion, and was sometimes referred to as a battalion commander for clarity. Regimental commanders were a step up, and obviously commanded regiments. Clone senior commanders commanded brigades or legions. The highest rank available for a clone was the rank of clone marshal commander, which came with the command of a full corps of clones, and as many of you know, Commander Cody was a marshal commander. Now that we've gone over clone ranks, it's time to address units. There were 9 types of subdivisions in the Grand Army of the Republic, not counting the full army itself or individual troopers. Squads, platoons, companies, battalions, regiments, brigades, corps, sector armies and systems armies all had their unique roles in the Grand Army, each with their own clone officers and, for the larger units, Jedi officers. 
The Republic Special Operations Brigade, which contained clone commandos and ARC troopers, had its own separate unit system that does not line up with the standard one. The smallest unit in the Grand Army was the squad, commanded by sergeants. Squads were composed of 9 troopers plus the sergeant, and they were very close-knit, with many having grown up together, at least at the start of the war. Squads were used for minor operations like capturing small individual buildings, and under the command of the sergeant, they could be subdivided into two fire teams to operate heavy weapons like e-web blasters. Platoons were commanded by lieutenants and contained four squads to a total of 36 standard troopers. They were small and versatile, capable of capturing small city districts, and they were used heavily in larger battles where their flexibility was an advantage. Companies were commanded by captains and contained four platoons to a total of 144 men. They operated in a similar manner with a larger range of capabilities and were the smallest unit to see independent use. Moving on to larger units, we have battalions, which were commanded by commanders and contained four companies to a total of 576 troopers. Battalions were considered small armies and were the standard deployment force for the average GAR operation. Regiments contained four such battalions to a total of 2,304 troopers and were led by regimental commanders in conjunction with Jedi commanders. Regiments functioned similarly to battalions on a larger scale and were the first level on which Jedi Command entered the picture. Padawans that proved themselves worthy of command were assigned to lead regiments, which worked out considering that regiments were rarely used independently. The next step up from the regimental level is one of the most well-known units in the GAR, the Brigade, more commonly known as the Legion. Brigades were commanded by senior commanders in conjunction with Jedi Generals and were the most commonly deployed unit for larger battles. They contained four regiments to a total of 9,212 troopers. They were highly modular, capable of serving a number of generic large-scale combat roles, for which reason they were favoured by loyalist tacticians. A handful of elite brigades were referred to as legions as well, and these units ironically became more commonly known by that name, though in most cases, use of the term is technically incorrect. The largest unit available for individual battle was the Corps, which contained four brigades to a total of 36,848 troopers. They were led by martial commanders in conjunction with the more experienced Jedi generals, and most of the time they were subdivided into smaller units and split up for different missions. Though, for the largest battles of the war, entire corps could be sent to capture the planet. Above the level of Corps was the Sector Army, which was commanded by a Jedi Senior General with a Martial Commander as Command Liaison. Originally, Sector Armies contained four corps each, but this number swelled dramatically during the course of the Clone Wars as the Grand Army of the Republic grew dramatically in size. Sector armies didn't operate as units per se, rather they covered entire theatres of war, coordinating their component units to advance Republic supremacy in the region. There were 20 corps in the Grand Army of the Republic, each assigned to a different military sector of the galaxy. Sector armies had their own planets as bases for their operations, which were usually strategically placed hubs in the region to which the armies were assigned. The entire galaxy was divided up into 20 sectors to accommodate these armies, which were grouped more generally into three different theatres of war. The Core Theatre, the Northern Theatre, and the Southern Theatre. We'll be doing a whole separate video about sector armies soon, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled. The highest subdivision of the Grand Army of the Republic was the Systems Army, which was, to be honest, essentially useless. Systems armies existed pretty much entirely for the benefit of the Jedi Council. They contained two sector armies and were led by Jedi High Generals, or in other words, members of the Jedi Council. In theory, they coordinated sector armies and allowed them to work together on a galactic scale, but the benefits of this were minimal and the Empire ultimately did away with them altogether. So that was our explanation of the rank structure of the Grand Army of the Republic and as per usual guys, I want to know your thoughts in the comments section below. Which clone unit would you have wanted to command if you are a Republic tactician? Let me know. And just before you go guys, there are a lot of interesting things in the description below. So if you click that little show more button, you might see something you like, including our second history channel, our Geetsu's Gaming Network, and our multiple Discord servers. So if you want to join the wider community, make sure you check all of those out. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.